Now, a few weeks ago when I was at, uh, well, a few months ago now, at Hampstead Town Hall, uh, George Galloway, um, um, George Galloway and Friends, and I was one of the friends, I made the, my opening remarks was talking about Palestine and, um, and the state of Israel and the, the <coughs> general uh, problem that we have in the Middle East um, concerning Israel and Palestine. And I made the point that it was ironic, I thought, that um, the state of Israel was um, proposed and um, created uh, by anti-Semites. It was a, um, a, re and, and a response, uh, been in the air for a long time from Balfour, that the Jews were a problem in the West. And this was a problem which... Um, the creation of Israel was intended to solve. Uh, Adolf Hitler had a different uh, solution to what he called the Jewish problem. Yeah, so it was actually uh, it was um, anti-Semites uh, uh, were responsible for the first idea of a Jewish state, and I thought this was remarkable. There was a gentleman who got up in the hall later on. And purporting to be speaking to George Galloway, with his eyes on me the whole time, the man had um, come from Germany in the late 30s, a Jew, escaped Nazi Germany and come to live in England. And he said, that staring directly at me the whole time, that he had never heard so much anti-Semitism, open anti-Semitism, I think were the words he used, uh, um, before, that this was outrageous, etc., etc. Um, Galloway said, well, you know, he shrugged, he says, I, I don't know what you're talking about as far as my anti-Semitism, when have I said anything anti-Jewish, what are you talking about? You know, but it was obvious the man was talking about me. He assumed I was anti-Semitic because of what I had said. And he had stared at me the whole time. So when my chance came to speak, I... I told the audience what he had done because he um, thought no one else could see that he was looking at me rather than at George Galloway. The audience was mostly behind him. I told the audience what he had done. That he'd stared at me the whole time and that I found this quite offensive. And then I said, can I ask you a question? And he said, yes. And the question I asked him was this, and he shrugged halfway through it as if, why should I know? I asked him if he knew who Ernst Tillman was. And he shrugged his shoulders and said no. I said, well, he was the general secretary of the Communist Party of Germany. And he shrugged his shoulders again. Why should I bother about that, Luke? And I said, who was killed, murdered by the Nazis long before Kristallnacht? There's a pastor, Neimoller, is it Neimoller, the famous East German pastor, who said first they came for the communists. Now, they didn't come first for the Jews. They came for the communists first. And the reason they came for the communists, because the communists were the only political party which were prepared to stand up and fight for the rights of Jews in Europe to lead decent lives without being discriminated on or dragged away. And we fought them at Cable Street and we fought the fascists at Cable Street and there were six million, I repeat, six million people voted communist in the 1933 elections, which Hitler didn't win outright, but it was a coalition, um, ribbon, the president of the chancellor at the time appointed him. It was uh, shenanigans behind the scenes. But once Hitler got the, a grip of the reins of power, that was it. They keep saying Hitler was elected, but he was only elected once. Uh, and that's the, um, uh, the truth of the matter, and it wasn't, uh, it was the same people who were in power, it was the arms manufacturers, Krups, and um, the likes, uh, who uh, paid the money for the Nazi party, and uh, because they knew they would make plenty of lulu, plenty of lolly out of, out of wars, uh, which they did, and which many people, capitalist West as well, but we had to fight them, because they were a danger to humanity. Um, the Soviet Union um, beat the Nazis. There's no uh, getting away from that simple fact. The war was turned around at Stalingrad. If it wasn't for Joe Stalin, we'd all be speaking German, not Winston Churchill. You know, and the idea that Winston Churchill won the war, 
is an insult to all the British soldiers and factory workers and all the rest of it who did go to war. Winston Churchill was, uh, I would say he was corrupt in the financial sense, uh, but he was a buddy. He ordered the miners in, uh, to shoot the miners at Tony Pandey. He was responsible for the careless the death of thousands of, uh, of uh, Australian uh, soldiers at, uh, at Gallipoli. You know, these things were forgotten. He was a maverick in the Tory party. He was a drunk. Um, I can't accuse him of that because I was a drunk too, but I got sober, he didn't. You know, and uh, I'll tell my favourite Winston Churchill joke. Lady Astor said to him, Mr Churchill, Mr Churchill, you are drunk. He said, Lady Astor, Lady Astor, you are ugly, but I'll be sober tomorrow. Well, that's a good joke, if nothing else, you know. Um, I'd still chop his head off if I got the chance. And uh, when I think that's funny, you know, uh, very funny. I haven't laughed so much since Churchill died. Shouldn't say all these things, but I just have. All right.